StatsNet Original Podcast. I'm Al. I'm JK. <laughs> this is a JK and Al show. Coming up. <laughs> you didn't think about these mugs, did you? Well, well you've got you got to always hold it in. No, you it says JK. Look, it says JK. Yeah. So for, you've got to hold it in the left I'll hand. just never be present. <laughs> no, I wanted to hold JK. So there you go. Now you're the Al show. We've got, we've got branded mugs for those of you who are not watching on the videos. Um, but if you are not watching on the videos, you really should check out Dad's Net Facebook page um, and go and watch. Anyway, I'm Al. That's JK. This is the JK and Al show. And today we've got Matt Edmondson joining us. And my goodness, this is a great interview. He's just such a lovely guy. So he's a really nice Such guy. a lovely guy. But also with it, some real gems for parenting. Yeah. And being an adult. Yeah. <laughs> so that's worth listening to. It's coming up later. We've got another parenting story. We are also in our gear review talking about none other than Henry. What, the Hoover? The Hoover, the vacuum cleaner. You should say vacuum cleaner because actually yeah. Hoover is a brand. So, yeah. yeah, we should. So this, so on, on today's episode, I'm JK. No, I'm Al. That's JK. We're talking about Karen and Henry. <laughs> 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 that will become clear yes. if you watch a little bit later on. Watch the interview with Matt Emerson. That will become very clear. Um, let's get into it. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> I lost my voice. It's still it's still not good, still is it? Not quite back. Yeah. But uh, but I'm okay. There was a weekend where I had nothing, and Je- and I was trying, and I thought I sounded really like husky and sexy. Yeah. And she was like, "Ow, you sound disgusting." Where well, you want to stop talking? You want to do the Gillette advert? You know, the best yeah. a man can get. Yeah. Can we can we talk about your health for a second, if if that's all right? <laughs> yeah. Just take a swig of tea. I'm feeling a little bit conscious now, but yeah. How would you say your diet's going? I'll give it a rest. What? What are you going to show? <laughs> <laughs> Just asking, how how would you say your diet's going? No, this is... This, what I think you're going to show is is misinformation at its best. <laughs> so Facebook, if you're watching this, tag this as, like, fact-checked. All right? <laughs> Okay, I'm just, I mean, I'm not necessarily going to show... I'm doing show, dry January. Uh, okay, which is good. I'm, I'm literally only drinking now a, mm. a weekend. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, and what would you say, what about food-wise? <laughs> are you, uh, you know, what's your, what are you eating at the moment? What's... I eat whatever's put in front of me. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm very grateful. And portion control? What are you... <laughs> what? It was a small plate. <laughs> 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 no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> right? Can I can I talk about this? Okay, they are that that is about two potatoes. Cut no, up, no, it's not. Cut up. No, it, shut up. And then it's piled. Yeah, they are. They're jacket potatoes. No, no, <laughs> well, they have yeah, a decent size. They're, they're two potatoes cut up small, so they're stacked, yeah. and they're on top of veg. Okay. There is also there's, there's there's a big amount of stuffing. Okay. Yep. Other than that, it's just a plate of veg, chicken, and two potatoes. Now, when you break it down like that, it doesn't look like that much. But I I agree, it looks big. It's not that much. I mean, how much gravy did you put on that? There's a lot of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> it's swimming. Oh, gravy. <laughs> Do you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of my dad. So my dad, he we, we used to have just normal round plates like, and that is a big plate. I don't care what you say. It's a dinner plate. No, it's 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 still a big plate. So we used to have normal plates like that, and I remember my dad must have thought to himself no i'm not getting enough food here so my dad is was you know he's tight as hell he went out and bought these i don't know what that more sort of oval plates yeah what, are they state plates or not they're like, they? i think they're like serving plates so yeah so he went out and bought like <laughs> i don't know four of these and started having his food on on that my mum my mum and dad split up long story and then we we then ate on these plates mm. okay I just remember it was it wasn't a serving up food routine it was a serving up food challenge routine I'm pretty certain my dad set himself a challenge on how much food he could actually put plate. Can on I a feel plate this? can we do the Everest yeah. of Sunday roasts and that's what that reminded me of. Yeah. I, I, I've, got, I've got haunting memories of my dad going, finish your food. I'm like, dad, it's Everest. It looked a lot. It wasn't in reality that. It was probably more, it's probably too much, probably more than a portion but it wasn't like... Don't they say handful? Isn't it a handful of... Like a handful of veg, a massive handful, handful of rice, and <laughs> and 400 litres of gravy. I think that's what... <laughs> All right. Gravy, there was a lot, but there's no calories in gravy, is there? Your eyes as well. You're it's like... It's just water. Yeah. <laughs> so, in my defence, 
my health is all right and uh, I am okay on portions. It's debatable, Al. Run the story. Just put the parenting story. <laughs> So um, we've started doing these uh, parenting stories. So instead of confessions now, we just want your your stories, which are just about general life, parenting, you know, cock-ups, you know, serious, funny, what, whatever they are. And today we have a story from Mandy. Okay, so Mandy has, uh, has sent us a voicemail. And would we all like to hear Mandy's story? Yeah, go on then, Mandy. Here it is. As we all know, when you have children, there is no privacy in your life. They literally follow you everywhere. This particular day, my four-year-old daughter had followed me to the bathroom. It wasn't until I sat down on the toilet that I realised I needed a tampon. So I asked my daughter to open the airing cupboard door, look in the blue box and bring mummy one of those cardboard things with some string hanging out, which she did. Walking across the bathroom floor with a terrified look on her face, holding the tampon at arm's length, walking really slowly. I couldn't work out what was going on. She handed it to me, and as I went to take the cardboard top off via pulling the string, she's backing away from me, cowering like, No, mummy, no. Um, And there's me, what, what, what? She literally thought that I was going to let a party popper off (laughs) up. My lady bits, we'd previously had a party about four days before and she hated the party poppers and she did think that mummy was going to insert a party popper into past her body. He would not insert a party popper. I've ne- never let her live that down. It was one of the funniest moments uh, when she was a young child. No, mummy! No! <laughs> I've got so many thoughts. <laughs> You know, there's those films where, like, a bomb goes off, but it's in the distance, and you just hear this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got in my head. Because <laughs> you wouldn't hear it. It would be <laughs> muted. I've, all, I've also got, in my head now, a, a, a whole new business on a, a, a great range of new sex toys. <laughs> This will guarantee your night will be explosive. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. Just brilliant. I wonder I didn't know what she was gonna say. But I I thought she was gonna say like, oh no, mummy, don't let the mouse out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought mouse as well. Because I thought she was gonna be like, excuse me, excuse me, going across the bathroom floor. I when Jen asked uh, on those occasions where I've also got a tampon. Also, by the way, well, that's a separate story. But I I also carry it on the thing. <laughs> I'll be like this. There you go, darling. <laughs> but um amazing, amazing. Kids are so innocent, they're so wonderful. Also, but while we're on the subject, can I just say there's nothing more terrifying when you you've gone to the shops yes, and you've the you've got a list and that list is all fine. You've checked the list, you've checked it twice. Yeah. And uh you go, Yep, all fine, right, great, great. So you're doing the shop. And then that WhatsApp comes in and goes, Oh, I forgot to put yeah. on the list. Could you I'm like, Oh yeah. no. No, I just have to go colour coded now. Yeah, that's but it. that's even look, realistically, the brand, the brand, what is it? Tampax. Tampax. Is that the brand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you got to say Tampax and which colour box. Yeah. That's all I need. But Tampax really should be catching on to this and just making them a little bit guy friendly. Now, I guess there's a responsibility that I should probably be more aware and know, you know, I could probably work it out. But if, if you could just make it a little bit easier because the time I've gone home and it's been wrong, it's countless. I'm currently watching on Netflix, Pepsi, Where's My Jet? Yes, fa- fantastic. Which is brilliant. I think we should pitch this advertising campaign to Tampax. Yes. Let's do it. That's their next advertising campaign. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it, it would really help me <laughs> if nobody else. Just literally this scenario I've yeah. done about we've checked the list. We, we're at home around the dinner yeah. table. We check the list. I'm then going to Tesco or wherever. And then I get that WhatsApp. Ding! Comes yeah. through. Look at it. Do, 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 horror on my yeah. face. And then know. we've we figure out that they actually Tampax have changed their boxes now yeah. and they're easier for dads to read. Yeah. And I like, you know, I don't want to be, you know, I'm not a, a prude about it. I think we should talk about periods yeah. very openly, but 
my the point the point is really it's like like because I just have no experience with that of course because I'm a man mm. it's so it's I, I've got no idea whether you need the one drop the two drop the three drop the four drop the five drop the wings the no wings the visible ones the not visible ones the thin ones the thick ones the in ones the, low rider <laughs> the over ones. ones the out ones <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I literally don't know. I mean, I, that is a lot to take in. And that's just off the top of my head. I went home the other day with a box. Jen turned around and said, Al, these are the people who pissed themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so I, and she said, thank you, I'll take them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they work a charm. Uh, no. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Like, it's, it's, it is quite tricky to work it oh. out. But Mandy, look what you've done. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've opened up a new ad revenue. <laughs> yeah, thanks. A, a new sex toy company. <laughs> and entertained us all i mean it's endless <laughs> <laughs> great story if you have a story you want to send in to us you can send it to us in the jknl facebook group uh just search for jknl on facebook uh or you can send us a dm on social media or an email uh dad at dadsnet.com actually no you can email us at jknl at dadsnet.com we need that email set up i will set it up by the time this goes out um, he won't, he won't. He won't. <laughs> the producer jack will remind me yeah have you sent that email? oh yeah. um and yeah check out the facebook group send in your stories whatever you might have in the locker we want to hear about it interview time so i haven't i haven't seen this guy for for, for a while in fact no actually I, I met him at an awards do but forget about that um i i love i love him he's such a lovely guy here's matt edmondson Oh, this is the, I. I haven't spoken to Matt for a very, very, very long time. Actually, that's a lie. We saw each other in the award ceremony not so long ago. Anyway, it's Matt Edmondson on the show. Yeah. Yes. Well, Hello, and also slightly out of shot is my dog. So if you hear strange noises, it's him. I was <laughs> eating an apple minutes ago, and if I have any food, he will follow me around. And he's now. What sort of dog are we dog. talking? What flavour? He's a uh, West Highland Terrier. Uh, the, uh, oh. He's a Westie, the besties. And he, um, yeah, little little white dog. Um, he's, I would say, I mean, I love him. I love him more than anything. He's the dog love of my life. And uh, but, well, he's he's a bit annoying at the moment. He's um, we've got yeah. we've got a one year old, and she likes to uh, create food art on the floor, and he's got an incredibly <laughs> sensitive stomach. As I think a lot of Westies have, because they're basically all in bread. And, <laughs> it's so true. And so they have real digestive issues, which I didn't know before I got a Westie. But um, if he even so much as smells the wrong kind of food, he'll have diarrhoea. And so with a baby just sort of flinging stuff everywhere, um, we're always on the, you know, on the lookout for his stomach turning. Um <laughs> But it's weird, you know. He he it's it's like he he acts like we, he's never been fed. Um, <laughs> he's just every crumb. Like he he will hunt out a molecule of food. It's bizarre. And yeah. and as dad of the house, whose job is it to tidy up and clean up any diarrhea that does happen? Well, generally he does it in the garden. He's he's pretty well house trained. Oh. He did actually do. Um, a diarrhea poo not long ago, maybe about three weeks ago, in the playroom. We've got one of those soft mats that sort of, it's got two, a different pattern on each side. And uh, and I, I thought, oh, it'll be fine, we'll wipe it off. But it's left a um, an unmovable brown circle. And so we've had to flip it now onto the other side. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's also such Always a dad move it. as well. Always, Always flip, flip it. it. Yeah. Our cat, our cat, pissed on the um, on the mattress last night, and Jen comes in and goes, "We're going to have to get rid of the mattress." And I'm like. Flipping. Flip the mattress. <laughs> exactly. It's always that pleasant surprise as well when you flip something and you go to flip it back and you flip it back and you go, the stain's actually gone. Yeah, this yeah. is the result. We can flip again yeah, next exactly. time. Exactly. Just keep flipping. Uh, it's it's sort of same same as the, <laughs> under, tell the underwear on holiday rule. It's fine. Just keep wearing the same pair. But just... <laughs> you can tell with dads because yeah, we're no. talking about poo, diarrhea, not just with kids but with dogs as yeah. well. You can literally tell. We've we've got um we've got a cocker spaniel and exactly the same. Uh, any slight bit of chicken, anything like that, always hunts food out. Look, if you, I've always said right. I've had a, I've had a lot of dogs. If you want to get a dog, which is stomachs are okay less hassle not crazy like batshit crazy stick with the labrador we, yeah. we had a labrador before and they just they just seem to be the general workhorses of dogs if that makes sense mm. 
That sort of makes sense, yes. I got confused by horses yeah. and dogs. Um, <laughs> I don't think it does, but thank you for humouring me. Um, I was going to say, I love the way that also we talk about our dogs in a similar way to we talk as talking about our children. So mm. in a similar way, what, how how was it being a dad? Like, tell us your kind of, give us, a, I don't know, a general overview of life as a dad from your perspective. Um, I, I mean, I love it. I love being a dad, but I also find it very hard. Um, and I think that, I think I don't, I don't feel like I've grown up myself, really. I still feel quite childlike. And I sort of somehow have engineered a life whereby most of what I do is sort of me playing. And occasionally I have to do something that feels a bit grown up and I don't like it. And so I found the shift from being compl having complete agency over every minute of my own time to having responsibility. I found that uh, quite a hard shift. I found it, uh, actually with both of my kids, I found the first year tricky. I found it hard to connect with them. Um, I think, you know, I like a, an anecdotalist and uh, they weren't delivering on that front. Um, they were they were entirely mute for the first year, um, and so I yeah I found it I found it sort of hard to 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 bond and connect and it, it sort of coincided that on my first with both my first kids uh, the, uh, with our first one Ivy I um, when she was born I had probably the busiest year I've ever had work wise and that was slightly hard to juggle um, and then. I had some, you know, quieter times. Uh, and then she, then my wife got pregnant again. And she said, Oh, God, I hope it's not like last time. Um, and I was like, Nah, it won't be. It'll be fine. You know, I've got I, I've, things are a lot more balanced out. <laughs> like you would know. <laughs> like I would know. Dad. It'll be fine. Yeah. And then uh, things got really, really busy again. Um, so basically, if I want to improve my career, I just have to keep fathering children because whenever one comes along, things go well. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, I found the first couple of years hard, but our, our youngest just turned one now. And, um, there's a sort of magical transformation, um, in our relationship and, um, she's got quite a lot of personality now and she started to walk and be a bit cheeky and climb stairs. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I, I mean, I love it, but it's really challenging. Um, and Obviously, the the uh, positives outweigh the negatives, but um, it's hard graft, isn't it, being a dad? Yeah, I I I, I can really empathise with that. But usually in life, when something's really hard, I tend to just sack it off. Mm. <laughs> you can't do that, <laughs> you can't, can you? And you no. can't do it. Like those sleepless nights and those kind of like yeah. relentless when you're not getting anything back in those early months and things. Like this, like in any other aspect of life, I'll just be like, nah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> do you know, do you know I, I totally agree. And, so, and some, you know, sometimes I think that dads would rather not say that it's tough. And mums also would rather not say that it's tough. But having children is tough. When, when I when I became a dad um, in the run up to it, I I kept hearing people talk about what it's like becoming a parent. And people spoke about it in a very... Um, uh, sort of emotionally charged way where they would say, you know, I, I I felt like my life had a new meaning or new purpose. I was a, you know, there was a different person. I was me before the kids and, you know, uh, think there's a huge change in me. I felt incredibly responsible. And none of that hit me. It was, it was, I was just like, oh, I feel exactly the same, but there's just this little, little person around that yeah. I'm hanging out with lots. But I felt exactly the same. And I thought, is there something wrong with me? Don't What's get me wrong on? though. <laughs> There were lovely times of like, I, I tell you one thing I do miss is when, um, was having those long walks with Noah, you know, when you have to get them to get them to sleep and it seems that movement is the only thing that will get them to sleep. I used to love those, those mornings where I'd be out for an hour, maybe two hours, just so he would sleep and, and my wife would get a rest. And I actually miss those times, but then I'm, I'm missing me time really. Cause he was asleep and I was just having time to myself, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, um, it's quite nice when you get, I mean, my favorite thing is, when you know i'll be doing some childcare in the day and my wife will be out running an errand or doing something and uh my our, our youngest will nap and she will nap for the entire duration that my wife is out and so i've basically Gold. just had two and a half hours to myself 
but technically <laughs> I've been on. Um, it's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. One more before. We, do, do you remember the time when the when they used to be in your arms, and when they fell asleep, you couldn't move. Mm, so yeah. you, you and I, I remember you. I, I would say to Charlie, like, "Could you pass me the remote control, please? <laughs> Could, you, if, if possible, a cup of tea would be great." Um, PS PS4 remote, <laughs> PS4 controller. Can you get? Can you just bring that over for me as well? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're asleep. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. try and get them there for an hour or so now. <laughs> I was going to say, Matt. We. I want to talk about your game, Karen, but <laughs> <laughs> which in itself is quite an interesting sentence but um before we do that i just want to ask the five-year age gap i don't we we get a lot of conversations in dad's net around what's the ideal age gap like is it worth getting them all done when they're like having two or three under two and just getting all the sleepless nights all done in two years and then you're good or is it better to space them out i've got a, an 18 year old stepson and my youngest is eight so there's 10 years between them occupying them both i mean he's 18 now he does his own thing but over the years occupying children with a 10 year age gap is ridiculously difficult how do you find the five year age gap which i don't which is like it might be ideal yeah it sounds it do you know what i um it's really working out for us uh i i yeah i i think the um i've, I've got friends who've who've um had children in quick succession and i can see the sort of short-term pain long-term gain argument of that um but the short-term pain i'm witnessing them go through is is painful you know there is it's quite full-on um and i think uh with ivy she's quite uh she's a very calm mature chilled kid our oldest one and she she loves willow more than i've seen anyone love anything and are you thinking babysitter well <laughs> she she does do quite a lot for us already she she gets she, <laughs> she mucks in she, she's she's earning her keep it's good yeah so well for, uh, for example this morning i was you know uh sort of putting things in the dishwasher and all the rest of it and um I said to Ivy, "Would you want to do you want to feed Willow her breakfast?" And she said, "Yeah, I do." And so they just sat there, both occupied. Ivy fed Willow; she enjoyed it. Willow enjoyed being fed. It was great. I, I cracked on with what I needed to do, um, and uh, and and she is actually sort of genuinely um, helpful. And it's it's getting to the point now where Willow's starting to want to play with things, um, uh, having an interest in toys, and you know, um, climbing and all that sort of stuff, and ivy is big into imaginative play and and she'll sort of create these scenarios of which willow doesn't know what's going on obviously she's just like a um you know a, a little potato with legs wandering around but um mm -hmm. ivy will create a scenario where it's like we're on a boat and you're a dog let's go and so she'll create this <laughs> narrative of which willow's part of and they will just play to you know willow's just enjoying being with ivy ivy's enjoying that willow's you know a dog in this imagined world that she's got and they play really well together. And, you know, I can just sort of sit there cracking on with my own thoughts. Um, so, FIFA. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, it's it's quite, um, I would say it's a really good, really good age gap. And uh, I'm I'm quite glad that we had a bit of rest in between the two, the two kids. Um, what I would say is Ivy, our first child, gave us a disproportionate view of um, how hard parenting was because she slept really well very early doors. And, it's always the way always and then this and then uh willow came along and it was a lot more challenging um and i, I think we were like oh it'll be fine we've got this down and uh we didn't have it down but during you know looking after children you did also manage to to conjure up a, a fantastic game called karen have you checked the stats of how many karens have bought karen i imagine Actually, I don't know. That's I don't know if it would be quite a lot of Karens bought Karen or not many Karens I bought think, Karen. I think some Karen people called Karen will have had a Karen bought for them. Um, I think a few, I've heard from a few people called Karen that have got it. Um, and, I, and I've also heard from a few people called Karen that um, don't approve of it. Uh, so you can't <laughs> there, please them all. There's a surprise. Well, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a challenging one because obviously... Karen is a name and there's a distinction between, you know, someone called Karen, mo mostly a lovely person and the new meaning that the name Karen has taken on, which is, you know, someone who, who complains, 
um, and uh, wants to speak to the manager and maybe has a slightly um, uh, uh, self-important um, approach to the world. Um, and, you know, they are two different things, but sometimes they do converge and actually they converge around this game. And, and it is a bit of a conundrum, a Karenundrum for the Karens, because <laughs> if you are called Karen and you complain about a game called Karen, which is all about people complaining about things, you are yourself complaining about something which makes you a Karen both literally because your name's Karen and in the new sense because you are complaining so um it's like the perfect storm it's a terrible it's an infinite loop i think um and uh, <laughs> uh but, but yeah but mostly it's been received very well by the ca people named karen community i think so right now there's probably a lot of people starting to search game karen mm. but for, for those not tell us tell us how you play tell, give us like the synopsis sure so i so i run a board games company called format games and uh i've invented board games for years and uh we've got about 10 games out in the world uh one of which is this game karen and it's the game of one star reviews so we've uh trawled the internet for hilarious reviews left on products hotels you know holiday destinations We've had one where someone complained that they went on a holiday, left a one-star review because the beach was too sandy. So ridiculous <laughs> complaints from people. And uh, we put them all into this game. And the idea is it's a sort of party game to be played with your pals. And uh, you would get, there are three different ways of playing, three different sort of game cards. But for example, there might be a fill in the blanks round. So it'll say, um, uh, you know, it'll give you a review like, uh, of a, let's say, a fast food restaurant. It'll say, the water here tasted like blank. And it has the real answer on the card. So one person writes down the real answer and everyone else writes down an answer that they think will fool the other players into believing it's the real complaint. So you're basically trying to trick people into believing that you are the real Karen. And you pick up points <laughs> for convincing the other players that your complaint's the real one. And also for guessing the right one, if you're able to, you know, work out which is the right one amongst the amongst the fake ones. Um, so it's already kind of quite funny because the the real the real reviews are ridiculous. But the way your friends' minds work when they are asked to complain about something is fantastic, and uh, and it's it's there's no feeling of satisfaction quite as good as when you write something fake and other people vote for it as the real thing and you, you they give you points <laughs> um so that yes that's how the game works and then, yeah three rounds there's uh fill in the blanks there is uh uh uh, r uh what is there there's uh, this is ridiculous um fill in the blanks write <laughs> write the review so you get told to write a review of um i don't know like a, an office chair but you know they've complained about it um and then there's uh there's what's being reviewed. So you'll hear the review and then you have to say what, what the product or service or whatever Clever. it might be is. Um, so yeah, it's really silly, um, ridiculous, laugh-along fun. I think that they are the kind of games, well, certainly they're the kind of games that I'm into, yep. where your own creativity can either uh, like really add to the game the game just basically facilitates your own uh yeah creativity or innovativeness and and you can kind of bring your own humor as, as a group as friends and i think that they're the games that you can play time and time again with different people can't you because the more pissed you get the better the game gets. <laughs> exactly. that's what you're trying to say <laughs> yeah can, on on that how on a scale like is this this is not a, a kid's Game. No, not is a, it a family game. Not a kids like game. A... No, it's 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 sort of fourteen plus. I would say with Karen, there's no rude content yeah. in it, um, unless you decide to write something there. Um, but <laughs> uh, but no, it's it's. it's I mean, that's gonna that's gonna be standard, isn't it? I know. You just know that there's gonna be a penis yeah, or exactly. we or poo. There's gonna be something thrown in there pretty early on. Yeah, they um. So it's it's more in that sort of I guess uh, cards against humanity kind of um, audience space. Um, so yeah, for like good for, good for, um, you know, fa like a, like a adult game night. Um, but we do, I mean, we have got games that kids can play as well. I invented one with my daughter Ivy in lockdown called Egg Slam. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a kid's game. It's sort of like, um, 
it's it's one of those ones that you can you know we we, uh, we always describe them as pizza express games that you know when you're waiting for dough balls to arrive you can occupy yourself with this thing but when the pizza <laughs> arrives you can just put it away and it's fine so they're like you know each each game like that, snap each game lasts two two three minutes that i think that that <clears throat> excuse me i think that that is an underrated statement that you've just said there because and i'm not i'm not blowing her trumpet but my wife for years she has and she calls it the pizza express bag and whenever we go to Pizza Express, she picks up the bag yep. and she takes it with her. And in it is coloring pencils, a coloring book, dot to dot, and a couple of the various types of games. And because, I mean, I'm impatient when I order my food and I've got to wait 20 minutes. I get, I get a bit impatient. Karen. <laughs> So, so they're, they're so underrated to have a game, and they've got to be small, like like a little card, exactly, box, yeah. or whatever. What's Egg Slam then? What's that one? So, Egg Slam is a so it's a game that we came up with in lockdown. So we were trying to occupy the hours, fill the fill the days, and um, we we got quite big into painting. She was five at the time. We got quite into um into yeah and do some painting stuff and uh i was painting with her at the kitchen table and i got up to go and you know make a cup of tea or something and i heard from behind me her go <gasps> and i thought oh god what's happened and i turned around and she went daddy i've invented purple and what she'd done <laughs> <laughs> was mix blue and red together and create purple and i was like yeah yeah that's a thing you can mix these colors together so we we, we you know we tried the other ones like uh, green and what is it green and no blue and yellow makes green and uh red and yellow makes orange and that's how you get the full kind of rainbow uh and she was just fascinated by it and as i watched her do it i thought there's a game in this there's 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 something in there and I said to her, there's a game, isn't there, around mixing colours and being the first to figure out which one, what colour they'd end up being. And she said, yes, it should be about chickens. And I thought, <laughs> okay, fine. And I couldn't get that thought roll, out roll of my with head. It. Couldn't get that thought out of my head. And I was like, okay, if it was about chickens, what would it be? And I thought, well, actually, it's, it works quite well because if you had a red chicken and a blue chicken, they could lay a purple egg. Um, so... The, the game is all about being the first person to spot what color would come out if you mix different things. So there's birds of different colors, primary colors, and they're on backgrounds that are primary colors. And you these eggs come out that tell you to either mix the colors of the backgrounds or mix the colors of the birds. And then you have a sort of, so it's a sort of snap style play, three piles. So bird, 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 egg comes out. And it's going to cover one of the piles, leaving two cards visible. And you're either going to have to mix the colours of the backs or mix the colours of the birds. Um, and uh, it's incredibly fast-paced and stressful. And kids are really good at it. My, my, I've never won against my daughter. She's so good. Um, and it's it has that a slight educational bit because she's she knows colour mixing now before they've done it at school so she's got her head around you know uh, all, all of that sort of stuff but really it's like snap but better because there's a kind of um, there's this uh, quick reactions thing that goes on um, and we've actually just invented a new rule for it um, which <laughs> makes it uh, all the better so when we when we do the next version of it we're going to add this new rule in and it, it makes it for adults, one of the best games I've ever played. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna sort of give it a tweak. We we may even release that new version as a separate game for grown ups because uh, it's it's incredibly um, addictive with this one extra rule, which I'm mortified I didn't mm. think of when we first came up with it. <laughs> no, no, no. This is the this is the next. Uh, obviously, you know, you got to keep going. It's like Apple with their OS system. You got to keep going. Do you know what going. I love about Matt? Matt Matt is very, very creative. He's like, and you can tell that he works in the media radio industry. But I have a slight bone to pick with Matt, and I'm just wondering if now is the time to pick to my bring bone. It up or Go not. for it. I, I think I will. There's so I was with family a while ago, and they were like, "We want to play this game," and uh, it's uh, it's 
you know, it's one of Matt's games and it's where you, um, you ask various questions, but you can't start your answers with a certain letter. Is this ringing any bells? Is it Noggin? The game Noggin? Uh, I think it might be. Well, so, and I was like, what? and I said to my family, I said, what do you mean? We've, we've done this on the radio show since 2013. And I'm like, no, he can't be taking I don't, all credit I for don't this. Think that's my, this. I, I don't think that's one of my games. I don't think it is. Is it not one of yours? I don't <laughs> think that's one of mine. I think, you, I think you've, you're barking up the wrong tree. Now. I'm sure it is. No, I don't think so it is. Oh, you, we'll you, you, there isn't a game that you've done where you ask questions. So let's, let's, we'll quickly play now, right? Yeah. Okay, you can't start any of your answers with the letter C. All right, let's say C. Uh, another name for a penis. Um, a cho- Oh, no, a chode oh. begins with C. Um, a, yeah, yes. Uh, a, yeah. A, a dick. <laughs> that is not one of my games. Sorry. That's not one. Of the- <laughs> no, no. The the, the 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 subject matter can vary. Obviously, no, it doesn't no, have I know. to be. No, like but that, that that format does not appear in any of my any of my games. So you've 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 played another game. Someone else has ripped you off. Basically, the the mystery the <laughs> mystery else, continues. Right. If look, my phone's over there. You're lucky it's over there because I'm going to check. <laughs> you check honestly. It's not one of mine. I promise you. We'll message you later and we'll you, clarify. You know that bone that I picked. Do you want it back? Yes, please. <laughs> Hands off my bone. I apologize. <laughs> Last thing, if people want to find out about all your games, obviously they can search for Karen individually, but if they want to find information about all your games, where can they do that? So uh, probably the internet. Um, uh, the format games is what we're called. Uh, so, or, or a bookstore. Yeah, on Instagram, we are at format games and we're on TikTok as well under that same name. And we post loads of stuff about the games there. Also, our website is format.games, and that has a whole, you know, uh, all the information about all of them there. Um, and then, yeah, they're kind of everywhere. They're in, you know, Waterstones, John Lewis, Tesco's, Amazon, Argos, Sainsbury's. They're all over the place. Uh, oh, there's my dog shaking his head. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, if you, if you like a game, uh, trust me, if you like a game, there's one there for you. And they're all really easy to learn and really fun to play and they're the sort of thing that um that you you sort of crack out at at the pub and it'll make the night amazing you know when you you redesign your kitchen and you've got an island and a dining table basically matt's games were designed for that as well exactly (laughs) that's that's how it works yeah, and, P- and some for Peter Express. And some for the movies. They're getting a lot of airtime today. They really are. Um, Send them this. We might get a sponsor. <laughs> um, Matt, it sounds like you're nailing fatherhood, so well done. I mean, I don't know, maybe... I don't know that I am, I don't, but that, I don't know that anyone is. Like I don't know that anyone is. I think, you know, no. everyone's imperfect, I guess right? as much as anyone can, yeah. you seem to be up there. And anyone that says they are, they're lying. <laughs> Matt, it's been wonderful chatting to you. Lovely to catch up again. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Sounds like a good game, doesn't it? I, I, do you know what? I'm getting more and more into games. Yeah. As you know, as I get older and as I want to spend more time in the house <laughs> and less money and less money, <laughs> I can't be asked to go out and socialize because I'm getting like that. You know, um, I love, I love a great game mm. and he's such a creative guy and you can see how his brain sort of works when he's yeah. talking about, you know, the, the, the egg slam when they were in pizza hut and, yeah. and all that the old pizza express. But yeah, no, I think, and we're really, really into frustration at the moment. The yeah. game frustration. Yeah. And I'm, you know, Matt's games, they're fantastic. We were thinking about this over Christmas because I think that we've lost as a society that kind of quality time as families, like all all members of the families sitting down and doing an activity. We don't do that anymore. Like mm. I'll play FIFA with Ted whilst Jen's working or doing whatever she's doing. Um, and then vice versa, she'll do something reading and I'll then go and get on with stuff. And we, you know, sitting down and just playing a game as a family, I think we've lost it, but actually we're consciously as a family, we're trying to do that a lot more. Yeah. We did Scrabble a few times over Christmas and Ted really enjoyed it. And we had to bend the rules a little bit when, he, you know, he's <laughs> to make sure they play again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's really, it's so valuable. You can have such fun. And, you know, those nights as well, when you've got people coming around, we also don't want to spend loads of money. Let's just get a couple of mates around and let's play the game. Yeah. We'll have a great time. It is. few drinks involved. Really nice. Nice so, bit of wholesome family fun. So check out format.games to check out Matt Edmondson's full range of games. And hopefully we'll have him back at some point because he sounds like a, well, he is a great guy. Fantastic. Uh, let's talk about Henry then. We've done Karen. Let's talk about Henry. Yeah. Henry. 
Henry has has quite a place in society. I think mm. you know whenever we I, I work at a, at a at a big place with a with a cleaning team that are pretty much twenty four seven, and one of them just insists on a Henry so much so that that he brings. Henry in. Is it? It's not even the firms. It's it's it's, it's his like pet. own <laughs> Yeah, it is. Wherever he goes. It's it's his own vacuum cleaner. It's Henry and that's it. It's the yeah. only one he will use. It's the only one that he believes yeah. is the best. I in the sixth form, when I was at school, uh, I got a job cleaning the school yeah. for two hours twice a week or something. It was quite good fun. We just messed about really. But we had a Henry, and the, the games and the fun we have played with Henry, memories for life. Absolutely. So, you know, you've got that classic Henry, the little trolley one with the long nose that comes with you. You've got the classic Henry, but what we are reviewing today is the Henry Quick, mm. which is, but, you know, for want of a better description, the handheld, the portable, the kind of easier battery powered Henry. Yeah. Um, and I say we've tested it out, actually, yeah. producer Jack has been testing it out. Yeah, to be fair to producer Jack, though, he, he kind of wanted one. Yeah. He, does anyone want to test? Like, well, I think we all put our hats, you know, yeah. and he was the one that was like, no, me, pick me, pick me. Yeah, and we let him, we let him have the, the Henry Quick. I was Quick. gutted. I would have, I wanted the Henry. <laughs> well, we are going to be giving one away in our Yeah, but that group. doesn't mean I get it, does it? You know. Well, actually, I think it means you're not getting it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> But if you're listening, join the Facebook group because that is where we give away as much as we possibly can from our gear review. So check out JK now on Facebook. Uh, right, here's what Jack thought. Hi, I'm Jack from Dad's Net and I'm here today to review this, the Henry Quick Hoover or rather the Hetty Quick because my wife fancied the pink version. So this is Henry's new uh, stick hoover, which is their competitor to the Dyson stick hoover and shark stick hoover and other stick hoovers are available um we actually had a dyson before this but the suction power really um started to slack on it after a couple of years um the high suction power just didn't work anymore and the battery life was rubbish um so henry sent me one of these to review um first things first it's a bit bigger this base unit is a bit bigger than the dyson um but feels really sturdy it's still got that pistol grip even though it doesn't have a trigger uh, all the buttons are on the top um which is super convenient you can turn on and off the brush rotation you've got your high power which lasts about 15 minutes apparently um otherwise battery life seems really good on this um one thing that has really stood out to me is the quality of the build so your stick plugs in like that and then you've got, uh, you know, your standard brush head. But here, this connection here on the Dyson felt um, felt a bit wobbly. Whereas this feels really sturdy. You know, there's no play in that. There's no give. Uh, the Dyson, you had half a centimetre of play either way. And it meant when you were hoovering, you didn't feel like you could put enough power into it. Um, so that's, that's really impressed me. Getting stuff in and out um, of the head unit really nice and simple uh, we've got a bunch of different attachments so uh, doing the stairs doing the sofa you know there's all those bits of crud that kids drop down the back of the sofa and that's really easy with this um the biggest thing about this hoover is that it's completely mess free so with the dyson when you empty it uh, it all goes up into this sort of like clear plastic chamber uh, but when you empty the Dyson, you're emptying the dust directly into your bin. Um, and that meant for me, there was dust everywhere. You know, you almost had to hoover the bin afterwards because you get the bulk of the dust in and then you tap out the last few bits and dust would just billow everywhere. With the Henry Quick, they've got these pods inside. So you open up, open up your hoover when it's full and you literally just take that entire pod out. You throw that away, put a new one in. Simple as that, and you're ready to go. Uh, there's no filter cleaning or anything like that, which became a bit of a pain in the bum with the Dyson. Uh, the filter is all included within that pod. So you literally just chuck that away. Um, and it's, it's, it's perfect, it's so easy to use. Um, you've also got a nice little bonus here. If you can see in there, 
uh, there's like a, a little ring um, in the top of the hoover. And that is coconut scented. So you get this scent ring that you can plug in. Um, and it means that when you're hoovering, that heats up and releases a nice coconutty smell rather than the smell of uh, dust and dead skin. And you know that real old classic hoover smell. Um, all in all, battery life seems good. Build quality is great. I love the pod system. That's That feels like a no-brainer to me. Um, really enjoying using this hoover at the moment. And I would definitely recommend getting a Henry Quick Hoover if you're looking for a new Hoover. And it's got a nice little face on it too. Tried, tested. You you ask any cleaner, they love a Henry. Yeah. I mean, and, and if they, you take that greatness and you compact it, they're not going to put it out if it's not any good. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the whole point. Yeah. This thing is, it's great. But And the thing is just, you know... <laughs> The thing with Henry Classic, well, I don't know what, you know, the, the original. Don't forget Henrietta as well. By and way. Henrietta. The, you know, undoing the cable, storing it, it is more involved. And when you're parenting and something spills and you just want to go, oh, roll your eyes and you go, Zzz, clean, done. That is what you want. And Henry Quick does that. So if you want that kind of quick, immediate fix, which let's face it, all parents do, then I think Henry Quick is a great option. Yeah. I totally agree. And uh, we'll put a link in the description as well so you can check out more information on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of part of life now. You have your 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 vacuum cleaner and you need your portable one as well, yeah. you know, for the stairs and stuff like that, yeah. for the car. Don't even get me started. <laughs> your no, car's always immaculate. No, it's not. It's, it's filthy. I used to pride my car on being <laughs> immaculate. Have, I think you have different... Like standards and expectations no, of what's filthy. OT bars, breadsticks, Barney Bears. Mm. Those are the three nemesis when it comes to stuff. What about so. rotten raspberries? Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, but at least they apple harden cores. up though. That's fine. Apple cores. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna hoover up a, an apple. No, I'm just saying on. the state of my car. Oh, it's disgusting. Generally pretty rank. Well, I'll take a picture for you of, of Charlie's car, and I bet you <laughs> it's worse than yours. Yeah. I bet you. Well. Jen and I share a car and I hate to say it but most of the mess comes from here. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, let's move on. Uh, guys, thank you very much for listening. Um, please get in touch. Get in the Facebook group, JK and Al on Facebook because um, it'd be really helpful just, you know, as we kind of tw- mix things up a little bit. It'd be great to hear what you think. Send us your feedback. Ask us any questions. Give us ideas for, for guests you'd like to hear on mm. the show because we'll reach out um, and we'll try and get them on. Coming up next week, I can't remember who we've got next week. Oh... Uh, uh, we've done quite a few, haven't we? So yeah, it's, a t- my- it's a surprise. Yeah, well, I can give you a couple of options. It could be. Go on then. I don't know if that's like no, leave shooting it. our load. Leave it. Let's. Uh, <laughs> oh, please. Please. Sorry, it's a terrible <laughs> note to leave on. Have a good week. Honestly. A Dad's Net original podcast.